Hasiem, kvīciem, kvīca cicas, aiz sapkasiem, hīls. Nonovoj skvēl. Great crater, we thank you for coming together. We thank the wisdom of the elders and their teachers. We give gratitude for those who have gone before us and learned the ways. We give gratitude for the wisdom that we can share with each other. We say, Haj Kasiyam. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Wise Folks. We are so glad that you tuned in. You know, Nanaimo Family Life Association is always so happy to bring you all kinds of wonderful information, especially island-wide. So we're grateful that you tune in week after week. This episode, we're gonna talk about the importance of pets and older adults. And in the studio with us, we have Sheila Malcolmson. You know, by day, she is the NDPMP Nanaimo Ladysmith. And by night, she's a regular gal and has all kinds of stories to share with us today. Later in the program as well, we're gonna meet some puppies, ponies, horses getting into cars. It's gonna be a great episode as well. And Dan and Dan are always up to their antics. So stay tuned, enjoy, and grab yourself a beverage. I'm gonna cuddle a dog. Welcome Vancouver Island to Wise Folks. My name is Dale Harvey and I'm happy to be here today to talk about the benefits of having pets in our lives, especially as senior citizens. Um, I'd also like to welcome uh, my new friend, Sheila Malcolmson, the uh, NDP MLA from Nanaimo Ladysmith. Welcome Sheila. Thanks Dale. So Sheila, you've had pets in your life in the past. Uh, can you tell me how you've uh, benefited from that? You know, I think um, my mom is 50 years into uh, her marriage to my dad, uh, just starting to forgive him for uh, bringing home a poodle lab a puppy when she had uh, two kids under the age of five and had just decided to help out my aunt with looking after her little baby. Like it really was the worst possible time for my mom. And of course, my dad was still in medical school or something, so he was not there to walk the dog. However, for us as kids to grow up with a fantastic dog so close to us, um, and then to see the, um, all the learnings and responsibilities that came with that, I think has just carried me through my whole life. I've, I've almost always had dogs right by my side, and, and I'm really grateful to my, my dad for uh, testing my mom's patience by uh, by bringing that dog Peter home when I was just so little. Good for you. Um, I know in my life, uh, I never had pets as, as a young child, but uh, um, when I got married and, and uh, started having a family, uh, my wife and I decided to, to bring a dog into our home and I know it made a big difference uh, to my children. Um, and growing up, you know, they, they certainly learned the responsibilities of having a pet. Um, now, when it comes to seniors and pets, have you had any experience there? You know, it's a really, um, there's a lot of really tender stories about, about the strong bond between, um, between seniors especially. They've got more time on their hands, how, and the, the kids are, you know, have, are out of the nest. And so to see how um, all of that uh, kind of nurturing and, um, you know, capacity and, and desire to care for others then gets transferred over, especially to animals. So lucky dogs, when they have 
uh, seniors as their owners because they've got that extra time to care and spoil them. But I, in my role as Member of Parliament, I sometimes see kind of the sad end of those things. You know, when seniors uh, move into an uh, increased level of care or retirement home, I, I see their anxiety about not being able to bring their pets with them. And I hear this from people in Nanaimo uh, living with disabilities as well. Um, such an important part of their lives to have that member of their family with them. And so it's our real responsibility uh, to make sure that, that we've got the kind of living arrangements, the kind of affordable housing, the kind of care situations where, where dogs as a member of, of um, our elders' families are, are able to live with them. Um, and, uh, and we know, you know the, the health benefits of, of having that um, you know, dog beside them just to settle them down when they get yeah. a bit worked up, yeah. or, um, or just the important exercise benefits for both the dog and, and the seniors of making sure they've got you know, a, a spunky animal to, to keep them out and um, keep them walking the parks and, and um, keep them interacting with their community in a good way. Yeah. I think as, as uh, people grow older, they, their, their lives tend to shrink because of people that are, uh, you know, maybe they've lost in their lives, so they have a tendency yeah. to stay home more, and then as a result, probably are a little more segregated from their friends and family, and uh, bringing a pet into a, into a home, whether it's a, a single family dwelling or an apartment building is, is, is uh, as you say, very advantageous. Yeah. Uh, exercise even if you're not leaving the building uh, yeah. you're still uh, caring for that pet whether it is a dog cat or some other other animal fish or bird yeah. um, um, I, I think that that you know it's been proven that there's uh, added health benefits uh, lower blood blood pressure things like that um, um, have you heard of anyone that's that uh, had those kinds of positive um, uh, responses to owning a pet you know, I've certainly heard from people that work in the um, um, mental health care uh, community. I don't know how important it is to be able just to, you know, just the act of, of stroking um, your furry friend uh, to see, you know, people just settle down and relax. I had a, a really moving um, meeting a couple of months ago with some of the veterans on Vancouver Island who are working with uh, service dogs um, that are trained to help them with um, PTSD, you know, men and women that just went through really terrible experiences standing up for our country and, and how important it is for us to make sure that they've got the, the care and support. They told me about the vital importance of having uh, uh, service dogs with them. And uh, I had this one experience of, of what a veteran, as he was explaining to me, um, you know, all the kind of expanding effects. He's now able to leave the house and and go to the mall because he's got that dog with him who keeps him feeling secure and calm. And even while we're talking, that dog was really responding to his own, um, you know, his own nervousness just by kind of settling him down physically. It was yeah. wonderful to see. Yeah. It's good for everybody. Yeah, isn't that great? Uh, and you know, if he didn't have access to that type of of uh, trained animal, uh, you know, he himself may have. Um, you know, become more reclusive and 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 lost mm -hmm. touch with, uh, you know, you know, being involved in social uh, social situations. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, I'd like to thank you, Sheila, for for sharing some of those thoughts with me today. And uh, I think coming up next, we have Dan and Dan with uh, another animal interlude for uh, everyone's benefit. Hello everyone, we are going to be having a really fun day today because we're talking about pets, we're talking about dogs and cats and everything else. And we have some pretty amazing people here with us today. They're from Island Canine Care, I hopefully I got that, this right. It's Mr. and Mrs. Doucette, Karen and Shane, and of course you all know Dan over there with, with the fake dog. Now if, if, you're, if you're an older adult, um, you know somebody like Dan for example, what would you, what type of a pet or a dog would you recommend or age of a dog would you recommend? Um, I think it's really important to look at your lifestyle. What are the activities that you enjoy doing? 
um, and start to look at breeds that can um, be with you in those types of activities that you that you like to do. Pick a breed or pick a pet that is um, going to be able to keep up with you and you're going to be able to keep up with with your dog. Oh, look at this. Hi, what's your name? Terry Bryant, Terry. and this is Cricket. Cricket, what does is, what is Cricket like to do? Um, she's a people person, that's oh. why she's doing this all the time. It's not for food, it's just to play. With us now is Wenda and Libby. And Wenda, I would like to find out what is the best thing about owning Libby? She's really, uh, a compassionate dog, she picks up on how other people are feeling. Now we have Ron and we have Buster here with us right now. Buster uh, and Ron live at Lakeside Gardens as well. And everywhere Ron goes, Buster goes. It's like a shadow scent. So we have Tom and Asia with us right now. What has Asia, what's the best thing about Asia that you find owning a dog, especially in the senior years? I think that, uh, well, of course, I'm, I'm uh, odd man out here because uh, it's not my dog, it's Ursula's dog. This is Jinjin, this is Katie. <laughs> and Jinjin, uh, I think you wanted to, he, Jinjin wanted to say a few words. Jinjin, what do you have to say? Now, when it comes to getting a pet, especially a dog, uh, it's quite actually advisable to get a pet that is a little older, not quite a puppy. Now, there's a reason for this, but I'd rather the expert tell you why and where you can get one if you really wanted to adopt a dog. There are many rescue places out there that will rehome the older dogs. You hate to say it, but people do go over the rainbow bridge, as we call it in puppy mode, and these places will hook you up with a dog that is suited for your lifestyle. Where, like, if you wanted to get a puppy, there's a lot of work that is involved, you know, potty training and everything and barking at nighttime. Where with the senior dogs, they still have a lot of life left in them and they're just happy just to hang out, walk down that path slowly, use their nose and smell. And there's, like I said, if you're interested in getting an older dog, there are a lot of rescue places out there that just deal in older dogs. Look at the body action. <laughs> oh, look at that body action. We had another dog uh, that was. Prince, it was a Jack Russell, and um, uh, it left us. And uh, of course, uh, Ursula, she wanted another dog. It uh, went up, and I said no. <laughs> then she said again, "We'll go another dog." And I said no. <laughs> and finally, she broke me down, and so we went up. And we got a little Asia. Oh, well, that's yeah. wonderful. Oh, just like Dan. Are you ready? Woo! -wee! And so yes, there was this rock climbing accident that I'd had and it was just the two of us in the Kootenays. I was climbing on my own, silly boy, and I fell 40 meters landing in the Elk River and Buster barked and barked and barked until a hiker, a passerby thought I'll go on check this out, why is that dog barking? And they found me in the river, caught up on some branches and a little bit of dead wood, uh, wood in the water. Wow, you're so fortunate. Oh, I am. <laughs> so he's just more than a companionship. Quite he's a right. lifesaver. He was my lifesaver. Just because you adopt a dog and it happens to be a bit older, may not be perfect right off the bat, but you gotta spend time with them, just like yeah. you have to spend time with Dan, <laughs> you know, to make sure everything goes okay. How's that working out for you? So far, it's still in the works. We have had a quite a day today. I know, it was amazing, I loved it. I think with everyone with their dogs and their cats, but mind you, we mostly had dogs today, but it's like they do everything with them and they're relaxed and they're happy. Whether you're in a senior residence and they're pet friendly like ours is for example lakeside gardens is very pet friendly just like other residences are and actually if you live at home alone what an amazing amazing friend to have with you whether you have any form of a pet and it just it just offers the companionship i think what do you think i think so totally it does I mean, I've had dogs all my life, and I imagine you have a puppy dog, too. Yes, I do. A real one. A real one, unlike, so this is your puppy dog, right? Yeah, that's Cody Bear. Cody I've had, Bear? I've had three black labs and one golden. Well, this is my golden, and his name is Zombie Killer. Wow. So you can take your little 
Well, he fits on my lap. So. Oh, well, mine can too. Well, yeah, okay, but that's going to be uncomfortable. Hi, I'm Teresa Osman. I am so happy to be here at Winsong Ranch. It's a beautiful day, and we are here learning about some unusual pets. Most of you have birds or fish, cats or dogs. Well, today we are going to meet Joy and Maya and some horses, some miniature horses, just like this, like Echo here who's with me, and some goats. So we're really looking forward to spending some time here today on the ranch. Hi, Joy. It's so great to be here. Thanks for having us out here. Well, hello, Teresa, and I'm very, very grateful that you came out. It's wonderful for me to be able to introduce you to Winsong Ranch and to my very special babies. His name, what a beautiful horse. This is my mare, Rain, and Rain is 18 years old, and she is a, an American paint. Beautiful. And there's another horse over here also, and this is Maya. Maya, hello. Hi there. And this is Cochise. He's a gelding and he's 27 years old and he is a beautiful, beautiful horse. I'm really curious. I heard earlier that you're not all that comfortable around horses, yet I, here you are. I know. When I first started coming here, I was terrified of horses. And I met Joy, found out about the horses, and I decided I'm not too old to learn. So I started coming out and helping with the horses and I uh, have gotten quite comfortable with them now. Well, that's, that's just great. We're never too old to learn. I'm, I'm gonna tell the audience something too. I'm not very comfortable with horses and here I am standing right beside them and they're really gentle and, and wonderful. Uh, Joy, how long have you had, had horses? What's your background with horses? I guess when I went horse crazy at about age eight, I started to ride at age nine and from the age of 19, I've had horses in my life almost continually. I love them dearly and I love to share them with people too. Oh, they are wonderful and I think I'm getting chewed on. <laughs> she wouldn't bite you, I swear. Uh, do you ride, uh, Rain? I'm not riding as much now, actually. Since my husband passed away, the work is quite extensive and takes a lot of time. But I have done considerable riding on the island. In fact, one ride on Cochise was from Souk all the way to Courtney in the back country, camping on the trail. It took uh, 11 days and 10 nights. Oh, that's wonderful. It was, it's it absolutely incredible. And that was only about 15 years ago. And it's a beautiful island to, to ride. Island. And when you see it from the back country, it's just spectacular. So now we're out here with the miniature horses. It really does look like someone has put them uh, in an incredible shrinking machine. <laughs> well, I guess it does, but no, they are bred to be very, very small. Originally, they were bred to be pets for royal children. And now most people keep them to show, and miniature horse shows are very, very popular. Maya, when you first started coming over here, uh, did the miniature horses scare you, just like the big ones? I was terrified of them. They got me cornered in the stall and I had to yell, Joy, help, I'm trapped. So she came and rescued me, but I'm a lot better now. <laughs> I know that some people call them ponies, Kathy being one of them, but they're not ponies, are they? No, well, you, you could call them ponies, but they are mini they're American miniature horses. Well, they seem to be incredibly, incredibly gentle. They are, actually. They're wonderful. They're wonderful with all people, and they're especially great for children. But what I've found is a number of people have come to me and told me that they love horses, but they're really afraid. So I say, Woo, well, I think I can help you with that. And when they do come out, we start with the little horses that are so non-intimidating. And people just love them. They are as they are right now. They're haltered now, but they would be standing here with us if they weren't haltered and they're just amazing little animals. So they're used mostly for kind of teaching and therapy. We're gonna meet these other two horses here. Which are? Oh, okay, the, are the little Pinto, the little brown and white mare. We call her Breeze. Her registered name is Chickadee Ridge Gentle Breeze. And the little Bay Mare is Echo, and her registered name is Vista Valley's Little Echo. Uh, you have another very special 
horse uh, with you, Joy. This is Puppy. He's a wonderful little animal and has been a therapy horse. He's been a parade horse, a birthday party horse. He's done commercials and worked with the RCMP. Did you tell us that Puppy actually gets into your car? Yes, he does. Uh, normally you transport a horse in a trailer, but my horse trailer is much too big. I don't feel Puppy would be safe in it. So when he's going to go somewhere, he very happily jumps into my car and that's how I transport him in the back of my car. We've had a great day here at Winsong Ranch and I want to introduce Annie who's now joined us. Annie is uh, Joy's sister, and Annie does a lot of the uh, heavy lifting around here. <laughs> hey, hay lifting, that's hey. not that, that's not terribly heavy. <gasps> and she does the hay lifting because Joy, the owner, is actually allergic to hay, which is amazing. A rancher with horses allergic to hay. Um, thanks so much, ladies, for joining me here today and allowing us to be out here at uh, Winsong Ranch. It's just been lovely. Amaya, uh, Joy, Annie, and this here is Tem Tem. Welcome back everybody to Wise Folks. My name is Dale Harvey and I hope you enjoyed the segment with the horse named Puppy. I'm back again with Sheila Malcolmson, the MLA from Nanaimo Ladysmith and we have a few more ideas on what the benefits are for seniors and uh, uh, owning a pet. Uh, my pet is here today, Maddie. She's a six-year-old uh, Springer Spaniel and uh, she gets a lot of attention at our house and uh, the benefits that I derive from that are a lot of exercise. Uh, in your, your experience, uh, Sheila, um, was it uh, up to you to exercise or walk the dog or uh, look after your pets? Absolutely. Uh, I really learned a lot of responsibility as a kid and, and I've had dogs in my life ever since. Uh, Sort of the, that part of the family that you just can't imagine being with otherwise. I also really appreciate, like my brother's dog uh, is half um, poodle because there's allergic members of the family. And so I really appreciate my own mom and dad's situation. They then are more conscious of, of having a dog that won't cause allergies to visitors or other members of the family. And, and so you know, my parents are 78 and 80 now. Um, they are out every day and just to have this nice little terrier schnauzer poodle mix um, compact he can sit in their laps very nicely you know, that would never have happened when i was growing up you know just recognizing that that new kind of breeding and mixing of dogs makes it um possible to have um you know a dog that's not going to cause any health problems for people yeah, especially I, important for seniors yeah yeah and i think uh for those seniors that are, are looking to get a, a a pet in their lives if uh, uh if you do choose a dog uh, it's important to, to talk to someone about uh the type of breed that you you uh, yeah. are going to bring into your home because uh, they're not all the same uh yeah. you know you you have to make sure that you know uh what type of uh uh, size of home you should have the uh, the exercise uh, that's required and and I guess in, in addition to that the uh, the cost of, of owning a dog uh, you know it's not just about feeding it's vet bills and and mm -hmm. and whatnot um, uh, I think that, that that there's an awful lot of benefits to owning a pet but uh, dogs aren't the only one uh, cats as well uh, I think can uh, can be part of that uh, have you had cats in your life? Yeah, I haven't had cats in my life, but I know that there's some people that just, you know, uh, they could not be separated from them. You know, that it's just so important for us to make sure that uh, seniors, as they move into a retirement home or into um, you know, whatever their living situation is, that, that it's possible for them to keep that sense of responsibility and control and companionship yeah. that cats or dogs or who knows, maybe it would be a parrot. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit, but I uh, I know you were recently at a meeting about housing, and uh, I'm wondering if there's anything that's being uh, talked about f for some of the the uh, the housing for seniors. If there's some rules or regulations that would uh, make it easier for seniors to have pets in their home. Yeah, you know I really see the importance of that autonomy. You know, for people, especially at a time that they might be feeling fearful about losing some independence um, as they grow older, the importance of being able to remain responsible for another being and, 
and to keep that really strong bond with pets. And, and we've seen examples of where that can work well. As long as um, you're working around people's um, allergies, as long as you know, the animals are under control and, and you can pair up neighbors in a way that they're gonna be just as excited to help with maybe doing some of the, you know, walking the dog and sharing responsibility. And there's a way for everybody to get along. Well, there you have it. Another fantastic episode of Wise Folks. Special thanks to Lakeside Gardens for letting us use their facility to be able to produce the Dan and Dan spot. Another special thanks to Sheila Malcolmson from, uh, from her riding in the Nanaimo Lady Smith. She's an MP, but like I said, she's a regular gal. To everyone in the studio, to all of you for watching, we're always so grateful. You can find us again on YouTube. If you haven't had enough, there's four more episodes you can watch. We're really glad that you joined us today. And in the background, you're gonna see my two best friends and one that I just lost. My beautiful Bobby Wilson and Kevin, both Jack Russells and both keep me full of spunk and I don't I can't even tell you what they do. They make me so joyful. And my beloved Stephen who passed away last year. Life just isn't the same without her. The good news is, is all the dogs that we have seen today, all the cats, the birds, the horses, the mice, whatever we happen to see, including those happy little goats, they're all part of keeping us as wise folks. I walked with the world for a many a mile. Life was fun for a little while. As I got older, how could I smile? How could I be happy for long? I met a wise folk the other day told me to live in a happy way now i'm walking in the good old way and i'm greeting life with a song mm Something is missing in my heart today I had to stop and rest a while Not really sure what I need How was I to find what's wrong? I met a wise folk the other day Told me to live in a happy way Now I'm walking in the good old way And I'm greeting life with a song I'm breathing life with a song.